the fundamental idea of chemical industry revolves in the feedstock or the raw materials. And this is exactly what we're going to be covering. First things first, try to imagine what is the raw material. In many cases, we think of a process material. Maybe we're talking about wood, maybe we're talking about blocks, maybe we are talking about acid or base, refined oil and natural gas, but in reality, these are already processed materials. Raw materials are unprocessed, so try to imagine that, and in reality, we're not talking about wood, rather trees, or we aren't talking about blocks, rather sandstone, or if we're talking about gasoline, we are actually thinking about crude oil with salt and water. And the list goes on and on. So first things first, transformation into platform chemicals. So the main idea is that feedstock are converted into key intermediates for countless products. So raw material is something that comes from mother nature and we typically basically process it into a feedstock and eventually convert it into a key intermediate. So ethylene, methanol, ammonia, benzene, these materials can sound as very fundamental chemicals, but actually they come from a raw material and these are intermediates. Foundation for end use industries are quite relevant. So these intermediates, we're already talking about these materials, for example, are going to be the fit for several sectors such as plastic, agricultural, energy, and construction. Good example could be, well, if you're going to be making polyethylene, well, you're going to require ethylene. If you're in the agricultural industry, maybe you're going to be using ammonia. Or if you're in the energy industry, maybe gasoline could be a good fit for you. And actually, we listed some examples right here. Polyethylene for packaging. So the actual end product will be the package. Ammonium nitrate will be the end product for a fertilizer. So either ammonia being mixed with nitric or nitrous acid to produce the fertilizer. Or PVC for piping. And finally, global sourcing and strategic importance. Access to feedstocks affect competitiveness, trade, sustainability, and I will even say geopolitical safety. Good examples are Middle East, known for their oil reserves. So you can imagine that the main oil derived feedstock come from Middle East. Brazil is known for its hub for bioethanol. So they are into biomass. Or maybe we're talking about China for rare earth metals, meaning these materials that are being used in the electronic industry. The main point to remark is that raw materials and feedstock are becoming each time more important and relevant to obtain. Let's talk about pharmaceuticals and medicines. And this can go from the actual active ingredient to the pill, to the liquid or to the emulsion that you may be taking. We're going to be focusing our attention into the active pharmaceutical ingredient, which is the API. And these are the core compounds responsible for the actual effect, or let's say the drug therapeutic effect. And we're talking about things such as ibuprofen, paracetamol, amoxicillin, aspirin, and such. All these come from chemical synthesis and biotech routes. So APIs, and should not be confused with the API from a computer, are made via multiple steps, synthesis, biotech, fermentation, batch reactions, and such. So typical processes are organic synthesis, enzymatic reactions, fermentation processes, and lots of these are actually not 100% chemical engineering, rather more into biotech or pharmaceutical sciences, but still a chemical engineering can have a broad understanding of pharmaceuticals. And understanding that formulation and drug delivery systems are also some of the interesting aspects of pharmaceuticals will give you a other view for this type of industry. For example, the binders, excipients, capsules, and controlled release coatings are chemicals or materials that are quite relevant for the pharmaceutical industry. And yet we are not talking about the API. So what I want to say with this is that we can either focus into the actual drug or chemical substance that is making the drug effect, or we can go to the other side, talk about the excipients, the binders, the capsules, the pills, and such. Now let's talk about medicines. Over-the-counter or OTC and prescription drugs are mass-produced materials or substances for public health issues and the specialized treatments. So examples can be antiacids, antihistamines, antibiotics, antidepressants, and such. Biopharmaceuticals and advanced therapies 
talk about complex molecules and engineer compounds from living systems. So yeah, we may be talking about vaccines that come from the mRNA. I'm pretty sure that you're quite familiar with the COVID vaccines, or we may be talking about insulin, which from this biotech world and such. And last but not least, guys, global supply chain and regulatory impact. Well, this is mostly paperwork, documentation and quality control. And we're talking about the GMP compliance, the FDA regulations, and of course, the chain transport. All the logistics that are used in order to ensure that the final product is delivered to the end user. So pigments and colorants, and these are the actual materials that give color, opacity, and the aesthetic appeal to the surface. And this can be as simple as titanium dioxide, iron oxide for red, yellowish colors, carbon black, and organic dyes such as blue and such. Next, we have binders and resins. These are acrylic resins, alkides, polyurethanes, and epoxy resins. As the name implies, these are used to actually bind painting and ensure that whenever the solvent is evaporated, they look homogeneous in coat. Then we have solvents and carriers, adjust viscosity, aid in application, and ensures proper evaporation. So these can be as simple as toluene, helene, or more complex such as mineral spirits, and the classic solvent water. And next, we're going to be talking about coatings, guys, which can be or not associated towards the use of paint. Coatings are used in this type of materials in order to avoid the contact with the exterior, such as marine environment or the atmospheres and such. We have additives for performance enhancement, functional and protective coatings, and of course, sustainability and low VOC solutions. So additives for performance enhancement. In this case, we want to improve a property for a given material. So this can be anti-foaming agents if we're working with foams, maybe UV stabilizers if we are going to be working in the sunlight or such, rheology modifiers for plastics and drying agents if we're going to be working in moisture environments. Then we have functional and protective coatings. As the name implies, we want to protect the coatings. So we may be talking about powder coating, anti-corrosives, waterproof coatings, heat resistant materials and such. The main intent is to cover the surface or the material in order to avoid this type of interaction, let it be heating, water, UV and such. And finally guys, remember that we want to ensure sustainability and good example will be low VOC, which are volatile organic compounds, water-based paints, low VOC solvents and bio-based binders. Specialized chemicals and other type of chemicals that may not be quite categorized in the previous list. Now we may be talking about catalysts, gases, explosives or niche application chemicals will be hard to select in which specific category are they. So I'm just going to be showing this as other chemicals. So first we have laboratory or analytical reagents, which the name implies are used in labs or in R&D centers. Maybe we use them for quality control, some testings, diagnosis, etc. Examples could be specific acids, specific buffers, indicators, and standards. Next, we have industrial gases, which could be by themselves a unique category. We're talking about gases that are used extensively for reactions, inerting, or safety procedures. Most common one will be nitrogen and oxygen, but definitely we're talking about hydrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, argon, xenon, and such. Explosives and propellants used in mining, defense, aerospace, and construction. So we're talking about ammonium nitrate, trinitrotulvane, the so-called TNT, or solid rocket propellants. Biochemicals and enzymes. Actually, I'm thinking on making a course on biotech, talking about these biochemical, bioprocesses, enzymes, and such. We're most likely going to be talking about biotech, pharma, food processing, and such. And all this is for the production of specific materials. For instance, cellulose, gist extracts, DNA material, and proteases, and much more. And another example, photochemical and imaging agents. So this may be used in electronics, printing, medical diagnosis, such as x-rays and such. So photoresistant material, contrast agents, toners, and such. And of course, there are many other types of chemicals and can be categorized in many ways. But for now, I really think that we cover a very interesting amount of chemical categories.
Love is clean and love is pure. And love is the thing that no doctor can cure.